A mother opening up after her teenage son fell to his death in an amusement park in Florida last month. I had the chance to sit down with her as she explained what went through her mind the moment she received that awful call and who she hopes is ultimately held accountable. This is not an accident. It's not. Nakia Dodd says she's still in shock and denial, still expecting her son Tyree to walk through the front door. I'm still like, he's, he's coming back home. You know, he's with the, with the coach. You know, they have another trip. He's coming back. And so to sit there and the room is empty, echo in the home. I don't hear any Fortnite games, you know. Any, it's, it's, it's a feeling I don't, I know for a fact no mother wants to ever feel. The 14-year-old died last month after falling from this amusement park ride. My heart instantly dropped because I'm knowing this is not a good call. And she went on to say, um, how, much, how much do you know? And I said, nothing. You know, I just know he fell off the ride and that's it. And she just, he didn't make it. And I just bawled. And I just bawled. And she said, when she said he came in without a pulse. Tyree Sampson had been visiting Icon Park in Orlando for spring break with family friends when he boarded the freefall ride. The park touts the new ride, which debuted in December, as the world's tallest freestanding drop tower at 430 feet high, reaching speeds of up to 75 miles per hour as riders descend while tilting and spinning. But the night of March 24th, Tyree fell to his death, falling out of his seat during the ride. The ride was going, and during the middle of the ride, the, the guy just came off. Paramedics rushed him to the hospital, where he was declared dead. I'm empty on the inside. It's like a hole, like a vacuum cleaner, just like sucked everything I had in me out and on the ground. Never would you think you'd get a call to say your son died this way. Never would I imagine. Because as a mother, you don't plan to bury your kids. Now his parents are filing a wrongful death lawsuit against the amusement park, the ride's operator, and manufacturer, saying their negligence led to Tyree's death. This could have been prevented. It could have been prevented. It should have been prevented. So, as an operator, you have a job to check those rides. You know, to be honest, saw, that was not done. That was not done. So. And if it was done, it should be done more than once, you know. According to a preliminary report released by investigators, a forensic engineering firm hired by the state of Florida concluded that Tyree was not properly secured in the seat the night he died and that a safety sensor had been manually adjusted to allow a larger gap between the restraint harness and the seat. This image, taken from bystander video of the incident, shows the gap in Tyree's seat. While the average restraint opening for other passengers was 3.3 inches, according to the report, Tyree's was 6 to 7 inches. Investigators say Tyree slipped through the gap between the seat and the harness as the ride slowed. His harness was still in the down position when the ride came to a stop. We've had witnesses come to us that rode the ride more than a month before Tyree saying, I felt like I was going to fall out. What seat were you in? Number one, the same seat. Tyree's family says he'd still be alive today had there just been a seatbelt. From the moment this was designed, it was designed without a secondary restraint. Do you feel that a $22 seatbelt would have saved Tyree's life? 100%. Tyree was an honor roll student and a football player called Big Tick by friends and family. He was a great kid. He was a student of the game. He was very humble, very respectful. Six foot two and 380 pounds, according to the suit. His family claims Tyree should have never been on the ride because of his size, which has a maximum passenger weight of about 287 pounds. They claim there were no signs displaying the size restrictions. Now that the state has inspected this and they know someone did this intentionally, I'm sure they're looking at who did it. Was it just Slingshot, the operator? Uh, did the manufacturer have knowledge of that? Uh, once they find out who and they inquire of them, we have to get answer, answers to these questions under subpoena and get sworn answers as to who messed with those seats. An attorney for the ride's operator, Orlando Slingshot, released a statement to ABC News saying they are fully cooperating with the investigation and that all protocols, procedures, and safety measures provided by the manufacturer of the ride were followed. 
it, apparently there's social media video that was posted of, of this. Have you seen it? Yes. Again, as a mother that had to go through this, I heard different stories, and I was told, no, don't watch it, don't watch it. I had to. That was, this is the closest I could have got. A little percentage of closure is what I got, a small, small amount to know, for me to visually see what happened. She says her rationale for filing the lawsuit is to try to prevent this from ever happening again. I want the riot gone, gone, because it shouldn't have taken the child or anyone to lose their life to put laws in place. This should, could have been prevented. What is keeping you together? Family, I have a nine-year-old daughter. I can't, I have to, you know, as much as it's eat me up and inside, I have, still have to be strong for her. Our thanks to Nakia for talking with us. That ride is currently shut down pending the outcome of the investigation. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.